All right, we're, we are in the prodigal son story. <clears throat> um, we've been here for seven years. Um, and um, we will be here seven more years to get a bride. <laughs> All right, I want to talk about the the extreme patience of the father to get the son. The extreme patience of the father to get the son. If he can put up with the prodigal and the elder son, well, actually, he is putting up with that. But in it, <laughs> we just hadn't figured out which one everyone is. But. <clears throat> <clears throat> but it doesn't matter because we're going for the sun. <laughs> Amen. That's what we want. That's where our heart is. And we're not going to stop. Um, and we have reason to believe that the Father wants it more than us. And that encourages us, doesn't it? From there, we can, we can run and... And if we stumble, he'll pick us up. And if we say something wrong, he'll instruct us. But he's not trying to just, and here's the, here's the kicker, folks. He's not trying to just save us from stumbling or pick us up when we stumble or when we say something wrong to do that. If he never gets his son, then there's no point in all of that. I mean, come on. I mean, see it from his perspective and feel the heart of that, and it will affect you because we seem to at times be content just to stumble along, mess up, get off, you know, get forgiveness, get back on, da-da-da-da, and can actually get used to that or, you know, using the scriptural phrase, continue in sin, <clears throat> which we all do to some level because nobody's perfect, amen? Right? But I think that little phrase, to continue in sin, has within it built into the true meaning that we get used to it and that's the way we live and we're no longer headed back to the Father's house. And we're no longer eating the Father's bread. We're still, you know, Maybe, maybe we left the hog pen, but we still got a bunch of the husks in our pocket. And we're chewing on them. <clears throat> well, I don't want to do that to the Father. Uh, and I don't want to, you know, I mean, if you take it a step further, it, if we're born again, Christ is in all of us, right? I don't want to drag Jesus through all that. I mean, if I go through it, I'm dragging him into that. And I don't want to drag Jesus through all of my junk and, and know that he's in there going, it's okay, we, me and the Father really don't care. No, that's not the case. <laughs> that is not the case. <clears throat> all right, so when the prodigal requested his portion, give me the portion of goods, give me the inheritance that falls to me, and he got one third of that inheritance. That request was so hard on the father. I mean, I, I believe it's probably a mixture of being insulting and heartbreaking. Um, why would that be the case? Because it's the exact opposite of what the father had in mind for his sons. The exact opposite. And, you know, it, it had to hit him deep, deeply. So, <clears throat> can the father be discouraged? Yeah, I think so. And can we, I don't know the right words, you know, take a take away his heart or, or wound his heart or something because, and here's why, here's why. Our father 
which art in heaven. <laughs> Hallowed be his name. Now, once his son formed in us, and he wants the son, he's got the son at his right hand. Do you, do you agree with that? He has the son at his own right hand right now. So what's the big deal? Why is he so adamant about getting his son? He wants his son in us. So how could he ever be satisfied with not getting that? When that's the plan. Made the earth for that. Made man for that. Put all, all these things in motion. Did all of that. And he just wants, you know, it's like, I just want my son in you. If you get him in you, if you get his heart, if you get his, let his mind be in you. And I mean, that right there, if we let his mind be in us. But if I, as I've said before, we're not letting it. We still allow thoughts that are contrary to the lamb, that are contrary to his heart and mind. We still allow actions to go through us what's what's doing that i mean it's not jesus <laughs> do you understand what i'm saying i'm not being critical or whatever i'm just trying to point out that from the father's perspective he really wants his son in us it's his it's his plan and and if you, if you took the time, and I still, it's probably never been presented. I wrote a book 20 years ago called The Father's Revelation of His Son that's not a little booklet. It's a big thing that's, that did a big search throughout the scriptures that talk about, that show, you know, because I remember when I, I'll try to finish that in a minute. I remember when I was in Bible school and Don Bird said, you need to have the son. Oh, you, he used this terminology. He said, you need sonship. You need to understand the son and the father-son relationship. <clears throat> and so I went back to the dorm and I opened my Bible and I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find this. And I'm going, where is it? I mean, really, it was like, I'm not seeing this, you know. Well, do you agree that the Holy Spirit has to open our eyes to the word or we're not going to find anything? I, apparently from the book, I, I did find it. And he took me through so many scriptures that were really showing the heart of the Father. For example, Colossians chapter 1, that he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Well, okay, charismatic church, jump and shout. Yeah, he's delivered us from the power of darkness. Well, that is wonderful, but it's not wonderful, really. It's, it's necessary or something. But wonderful is, and he's translated us into the kingdom, and the King James says the kingdom of his dear son. But the actual translation is the kingdom of, of the son of his love. And I just went, oh, 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 oh. He didn't just save me and make me a citizen of a kingdom. I mean, you see the difference, you know. Well, we're, we're children of the king, which you know what I think about that already, you know. We're not children of the king. We're children of the father, and Jesus is our big brother, if you will. But, but still, it's not about a kingdom like England has or whatever it's the kingdom of the son of his love and we've entered into that and if you could the wording is blessed of God to help us to go oh my God he didn't just save us or save us and then there's a kingdom in heaven and one day we're going to go in that. We have been past tense translated. We're there now, but we're living like Denton is what it's all about. Well, that's a, that's a slap in the face. Or I try this, like crumbs, what it's all about. <laughs> that has a little more impact, doesn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> Um, no. 
uh, I don't live in crime. I don't. I don't. I genuinely don't. I sleep there. <laughs> but I live in Christ. And that's, I mean, you ask my wife. I mean, I don't do a whole lot but just get on my knees in my heart and seek the Lord because I, I have to. I have to have Jesus. I have to. And I have to have him more than what I've got right now. And I'm not talking about greedy or gorging myself. I'm talking about, I said it again to my wife today. I said, I am blind and I am dull of hearing. And because I shared something with her that was from the Lord. And she went, oh, you know, you see so much. And I said, I don't see a thing. I can't see a thing without the Holy Spirit opening my eyes to the Son of the Father's love. And, you know, so my, my pursuit will never end. You know, I never left Bible school. <laughs> I'm still in school. I'm still sitting in my little chair with the Holy Spirit in front of me going, okay, here's the deal I'm going just help me. I'm so deaf and blind and dumb. <laughs> He's going, I know. I know you are. You really are. <laughs> but you know, it says he's chosen the foolish things of the world. And I go, there's hope for me. There's hope for the flowers. Anyway. <clears throat> all right. So, so the, it's, this is all discouraging to the father because the son is acting outside of the father's purpose. Okay. Okay, get ready. What purpose? What purpose? Okay, we would immediately say the son, but there's a prerequisite to that. The prodigal son is operating outside of the purpose of death. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When he who is your life, that's what it says, shall appear. It's not talking about Jesus coming back in the clouds. I need my life to appear. Is that a big deal? I don't know. Everyone else, but yeah, my God. You know, so that means... That that's my life. I need to know that in a real way and not in a theological way. I've known that I've known the facts of it for years. I need Jesus as my life. And I am gonna be like blind Bartimaeus. I am gonna keep yelling. I'm gonna keep yelling. Jesus! The son of David! And I know that some people are going to get tired of it and say, Randy, just calm down. Blind Bartimaeus, just calm down. You don't need to yell. He'll, he'll get to you, you know, in his time. And I can just see him. They're standing going, just calm down, you know. It's a big crowd, and Jesus is real busy. And I can just see him all of a sudden look up over their shoulder and go, Jesus! <laughs> and they're going, hey, dude. Jesus walks over and says, what do you need? And he says, I need to see. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I am blind. Okay, well, get ready. And when he opens his eyes, there's Jesus. It's like, dude, this is, this is what it's all about. The first thing you see is Jesus, and then everything else is added to that. All right, so <clears throat> by the son, which you could say both sons, acting outside of God's purpose, certainly you see with the prodigal, him just taking the inheritance to himself without death, he's acting outside of the spirit of God, of the spirit of the family, of the, it's a spirit that's completely wrong. It's not wrong, it's completely wrong. But despite the 
audacity and the shame and the wounding by the younger son, the father grants the wayward son his request, his desire, his desire. He gives him his desire. All right, but, but if you know the father, to do that runs totally contrary to the father's heart and motives. That's not what he wants to do, but that's what's going on. But he lets him go. Now, don't, don't misread the father's motives. Don't mis misread that. He's, he's long-suffering and he's, you know, he's, he's long-suffering to gain the son of his love. See, he's not just, oh, that's just grace. God just granted me grace. Oh, my God. Why are we so religious? I mean, I wish I could just slap religious people. Oh, sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to mean y'all. <clears throat> I don't want to slap religious people. I, I, want, I want the Holy Spirit to slap me <laughs> and get me right, you know? That's the truth. <clears throat> so the father stomachs the, the prodigal mindset and he stomachs his prayer request and he stomachs the, the prodigal son's pulls against the father's heart, pulling in the opposite direction of the father's heart. He stomachs that. He puts up with it. But God is not merely indulging us or showing grace to us. He's waiting for something. What's he waiting for? He's waiting for oneness. And that's going to be his son coming forth. He's waiting on oneness. Is that worth something? It's worth something. So the prodigal son is not just off center or slightly missing it, which is kind of the, the way we look at ourselves. He is dead to the father's heart at this point, to the father's heart of what he wanted, what he had in his heart. You see that? That's not, he's not, oh, you're dead to me. No, you, you, you died to what was the plan for you. You left it. You went away from that. And he's lost and he's dead and the truth is until you allow the son to begin to take over and not just help your flesh then you're lost and you're dead does that mean i'm going to hell no we're not talking about that. god help us just god help us we have to we have to see past good and evil, heaven and hell. Uh, we have to, you know, I don't know. This is probably a dumb way to put it, but it's like we have to quit fooling around out here and get, going, Father, I need some more money. Father, fix this. Father, heal me. And just crawl up in his lap, as it were, and say, I'm just going to stay here for a while. I need to hear your heart. I need you to show me Christ. I need to show me your greatest desire and move on me because I will default back every time, every time, every time, every time. Move on me according to your heart. There I go, blind Bartimaeus in you again. But it is the truth. It is the truth. It is the truth. And... We, here's the thing too, we think, what, which one did you show me? I'm sorry. I, okay. We, <clears throat> we think that, that for whatever reason, we think that we're not worthy, and that's what the prodigal son came back. We're worse than not worthy. <laughs> you know? Because we're blocking the father from getting his son. We're blocking. We're, we're, you know, we're standing in between the father and his son and, and going, hey, you know, I need, you know, do this, da-da-da-da. And 
I've said this before recently, but when we get to the place where we're determined to stay focused on Jesus without dragging our dead flesh into it, when we get to that place, so much drops off. You, you don't ever have a problem with condemnation because it's not about you. You're not thinking about you. Condemnation is when you're thinking about yourself. You don't have those kind of problems. You, you, you're not distracted by the devil. Like, oh, the devil. So? Don't say that, Randy. He'll come after you. So? God will turn it to form Christ in me. That's what he did with Jesus. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And the devil immediately grabbed him up, pulled him off in the wilderness and started tempting him and putting him through all kinds of stuff. Jesus could have said, this ain't right, Father. You said I'm your beloved son. You should have protected me, you know. Does that sound like anybody you know? <laughs> and, you know, and, and why am I out here? But Jesus didn't do that, you know. Uh, bow down to me and I'll give you all these kingdoms. Everything he said was about the Father. You know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Father. You talk about focus? That's focus. He's focused in. You know, aren't you hungry? i not, you know, I'm living by other bread. How about that? You know? <laughs> and so that... Focus just starts dropping bats off of you that have been hanging on to you. They just, they, just, you know, they just fall to the ground going, what happened? He used a God stun gun on us, which was what? Not even giving them a thought, you know. And I, you know, I know many of you have aches and pains and stuff. I do too. But I do not let my body rule me. I, I don't. I don't. In fact, what was it? The, well, I'll just tell you that even recently there was a thing that was trying to rule my body. And when I say rule my body, that means have the attention. Not, not be there. It was, it's still there. But I just, you know, realized I've been going for a couple of months now you know, given place to this on, on some level. And I went, Father, I'm just going to be with you. I mean, I really did this, and this is not, you know, you've done it too probably, you know, in some area. And I just went, I'm, I just want to be with you, and I'm not going to focus on that anymore. And the amazing thing that happened was that once I started doing that, it actually went away. It went away. I don't, I don't even claim it's healed. <laughs> I don't even think in terms of that it was healed. I think in terms of, I guess I just got so wrapped up in the Lord, I, I'm not even mindful. It's probably still there, you know what I mean? But I'm just it's so not mindful of it. Well, okay, now let me just close with this. And that is, my Lord, I, you know, I know that, that there are people suffering way worse than anybody here, you know? But I know that there are people here that have things and hurts and stuff like that. <clears throat> In what I am saying, I am not saying that there's something wrong with you if you have that or if you feel it or if you go through stuff or even if you ask God to heal you. I'm serious. I, it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I believe there's another remedy beside healing, and it is by getting your focus. If your eye is single, if your eye is single, something will happen. I bet you'll be able to have at least one victory by having a single eye. So please don't misunderstand. And I do have compassion on those things, but if I really care about the father's heart I have to say get up soldier and let's go you know get up let's go get up yes. maybe some of y'all don't realize I was in the army and I was a sergeant with sergeant with 20 
26 men for a while, so I had to do that a lot, and, and I saw the value of it. <laughs> Another military man back there. All right, y'all ready to pray? Let's, let's trust the Lord and see, one of the things that we can do is that we'll focus on ourselves after hearing that and go, well, I'm not focusing on the Lord. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. It really is. There's no end to this stuff. We have to put our hands our, by ourselves in the hands that are nail scarred. Okay? Father, we, we thank you for what you're declaring. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are really freely active to declare the heart of the Father and to help us to know the Father more, and in knowing the Father more, we're knowing the Son. And, and Holy Spirit, you're just not declaring yourself, but you're just having a ball just declaring the Father and the Son to us. And we're not looking for the benefits. We're wanting the Father's heart. And, and even if we, we're not exactly where we think we should be or whatever, it does not matter at all. You are saying right now, right this minute, just say to me, I want you, Father, and I want your son, and have even an ounce, if just a grain of mustard seed faith, just that small, I, will, I can move mountains. Father, that's the word of God. That's real. And we want to step out of religion and, and knowing all kind of stuff while we live so contrary to your heart. And literally, we're not just leaving you, Father. We're still standing in the way of you being able to get your son. It's like we're standing right in the way blocking you from ever getting your son because prodigal lives in us. Prodigal lives in us. So we ask you, that just continue to move and let the word that's going forth about this, this, this progression that's happening, let it gain momentum in us. Let it have feet and let it move forward and not by our strength or our commitment or even our faith in that sense, but by your heart's desire to make a way where there seems to be no way. We want you, Father, and we want your Son, and we want to unite you, not stand in between you and stop you. And we would love to see that your joy when you look in our face, but you see Jesus and not us. We would love to see that and then go make merry with you. We would love to feast with you over the crucified Son, the, the fatted calf that was killed. We would love to to have our fellowship with the Father and the Son. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.